Hello, my friends. Today, I'm going to save you tons of time. Don't skip any of these steps as everything is important. I want to help you make your first beat and just kind of get an understanding of how beats are made. I'm going to make sure you avoid all the mistakes that I made when I first got started. And all you really need to do is sit back, relax, and just watch this video. All right, so first thing, when you open up FL, it'll probably look something like this, and you'll probably feel like a bit overwhelmed as there's so many different things that you have no idea what they are. So let me just go through a few of these. Right here we have the channel rack. This is where like all of your instruments are gonna go. Here we have some default sounds with an FL, which we'll replace because, you know, there's not the best sounds to be honest, so nobody uses these really. Basically on right here, this is where you would you know, add your sounds, or you can do something like that. If we dive deeper into this, and you go to your piano roll. This is like, let's say we had a piano. This is where you'll add your notes here. Next, if we click this right here, this is the mixer. And this is basically where you'll put your instruments onto and you'll add effects and kind of mix them, which I'll get into a bit more later. And then another important thing is this right here, which is the playlist. This is where you basically just go in and arrange your beats, etc. But the main things I wanna go over today are really kind of three areas. And basically in the simplest terms, the part of your beat without drums, which is like the sample, the melodies, etc. Drums, and then mixing. First up, let's talk, you know, creating a sample first. And this is what is probably going to be easiest for you, especially when you're just getting started. And honestly, it might feel like cheating, but tons of top producers do this, probably your favorite producer, and that's using samples or loops. And what that is, for example, is if we open up our multi-kit Lost, again and with a sample a lot of them will be labeled with a bpm which is kind of just the speed of the beats and so if we look at my sample right here it says 90 bpm and so what you want to do is change your project to 90 bpm to match it so if we just drag this in like this And for this sample specifically, I have it kind of already laid out. So this would be like the intro of your song, chorus, maybe like a post-chorus here, and then a verse section. But from here, you could technically, and people will do this, is just go and add drums or just add a drum loop and then kind of create a beat that way. Or what a lot of producers will do is they'll maybe go in and, for example, play with the pitch. We click turn off load regions and then go down. You can kind of change the pitch. That's one thing people will do. So so now it'll sound like this. And then a lot of people, this is especially popular in like boom bap and like old school hip hop, people go in, take this and maybe like chop it up and rearrange it into something else. So for like example. And then another thing you can do, depending on where you get your loops, and this is specifically what I like to do, is for all of my loops, I like to lay out each of the instruments individually. And then you would just go to this little razor tool right here, and then just go in and cut everything. I'm just holding shift and clicking. And these are each of the individual instruments. And then people can go and kind of arrange things how they want specifically. All right, so on the flip side, what you can do, and this is a little bit more complicated. If we look here, and this is just a sample that I was just playing. This is just it, it in its original form. Basically in the simplest terms of how you can go and create something like this, you'd wanna go to your channel rack, and then you'd go down here to add instruments and you probably have to use a free instrument that already comes with FL. So you'd open up something like Flex and then you'd go in, open up your piano roll and you'd add notes. Now, another thing that you can do that's pretty cheap that you guys will probably see in really any of the videos that you end up watching. A lot of people like to use one shots. So I just want to go over that really quickly. This is a one shot from my kit, Lost Again. And to use them, all you have to do is drag them in like I did right there. Click on them. Go to Stretch Pro right here and go to this. Turn the attack down. Something like this. You can kind of play around with that. And hold all the way up. The K down. The sustain down. And then you can play with the release. And the release is just how long it's going to kind of sustain when you play a sound. If we just copy this right here, with this control X, paste it down to V, you'll hear that it's in instruments. 
And the next thing I want to talk about, as you're definitely going to see this in other videos, and this just makes creating your own samples a lot easier as well, is MIDI. And what MIDI does is it makes it really easy to come up with stuff so you don't have to, you know, manually add notes and whatnot. You just go open up your MIDI. So this is your, all the MIDI that are included. You just drag the sounds in. So drop it in and then you can get something like this. Hopefully that was at least somewhat helpful in terms of just knowing how to create your own samples. And so yeah, for this one right here, we'll choose this sample right here and I'm just gonna lay it out really quickly and we'll move on to drums. All right, so now on to drums. And this is easily the most underrated part of making beats. For example, let's take some drum loops from my drum kit demo. So we take a drum loop like this. Totally different vibe than something like this. And again, with drums, you can either do this from scratch or you can use drum loops. A lot of people kind of just mix the two, to be honest, though. If we wanted to go in and create our own drum patterns, let me just show you kind of how to do that. So what you'll typically want to do is you'll have a few sounds. So you'll have like a snare or a clap. So let's just grab one from this drum kit right here. Now to add a different drum kit, all you'll need to do is go to options, go to general settings, go to file, and then you'll just need to find the file on your computer. So you just click something like this, click one of these, and then it should show up on your side panel right here. But yeah, basically you typically have a few sounds. So you'll have a snare clap. So then you'll want some sort of a kick sound. Then you'll want a hi-hat sound, which is just something like this. And then just a little bonus. You want like some sort of perk. And then last but not least, you'll want an 808. And this is literally the most important sound in a lot of music today, or you can also use a bass line instead. All right, so I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because this is probably the BPMs most people are gonna be using. So typically where you'll want your snare is gonna be either right here. This is for anything that's above 100 BPM. If it's below that, you'll kind of want to just cut this in half. You can also put it right here. This is gonna be a little bit faster, more common like pop beats, EDM, etc. Now your kick is pretty much always gonna go on the one, like pretty much 100% of the time. You can kind of pick different pockets to use. I like putting them on these thirds right here or at the beginning. And then you have your hi-hat right here, a really common hi-hat pattern that's very simple, is just to go right click here and do fill every two steps. Then your open hat, you typically want this on like the thirds or even at the beginning to kind of like start the loop. So we gotta do something like this. or you could also do something like this. And then you can do the same kind of thing with the perk as well. Maybe do it on this third here, or you can do it there if you want it instead. Now next though, we have, you know, the king of all the drums really, an 808. Now there's a few things you'll need to do with your 808 that you don't need to do with these other drums. First thing is you wanna right click it and do cut itself. That's gonna keep it from running into itself essentially. And then in addition to that, for the most part, you're not gonna be able to just place your drums on here or your 808 on here. It's because your 808 works like an instrument, like a piano, and it has to be on a note that makes sense with your loop, your sample, or your melody, etc. And so typically what you'll have to do is based on the key of the beat. That's kind of how you figure out where the 808 sounds best, which I'll explain in a second, but let me show you the easy method I have. If I just drag this in right here, these are the chords I use to create the melody. And what's helpful about this for your 808 specifically is for your 808, you're typically going to want to use the root notes of the chord if you're using a chord or whatever. So for example, right here, these would be considered the root note. And so this is actually where we'd want to place our 808. So if I just copy this and I just did control A to select all and then C to copy. And then if I just go to my 808 right here and then do control V to paste and just drag this over to the beginning right here. And then you'll want to do control and go up, up again. And we can drop this one down. As for your 808, you're typically going to want it just to say a five. This is the fifth octave. And so here's how your 808 should sound. And we're gonna do some things to make it sound better as well. Now, if you didn't have these chords, what you have to do is just know the key. So for example, let's say this sample was in A minor, right? Which would just be all these white notes right here. 
then we would basically have to go in and basically listen and see like which notes sounded within that scale. Now if that note doesn't sound good. No. Eh, no. Until you find the notes that work. Now that you have your 808s in, typically what people will do is they'll kind of move these around a bit, and kind of get a good bounce going. Maybe we'll add some chops. And to do that, you just get this blade right here. We'll find a little spot to, you know, move it. What you'll notice here is B can sometimes, depending on the 808 you're using, it can sound good when it's on the fourth octave. So it just says B4. But once you get down to, for example, A sharp, this might sound good with some 808s. Let's give this one a listen. So it works, it actually sounds better there. Another thing to mention is a lot of times people will have the kick and the 808 hitting on the exact same time. Here, you can see we don't. I think that adds a little bit more bounce. But all right, we're almost to the end. And this part is called mixing. Basically what mixing is, is it's where you make everything sound good and kind of work together. So I wanna just go over two of like the bare minimum type things. So right here we have all of our drum sounds right here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go, and you're gonna hold shift, you're gonna highlight all of these, then we're gonna go right up here, click on this, and then if you just do control shift L, then all of these instruments are gonna show up on here. So these are just our drums, and if you wanna move them over, you can just hold alt and then use your arrow. Now if we go to the sample, because we have a bunch of instruments kind of chopped up, you're gonna wanna go to each of these sounds, so all this is a different part just chopped up right here. So we have one, two, three, four, five different parts, right? And you'll see to right click each of them, go to make unique, and you just click on it, press F9, or you can just click right here, and then you'll just wanna go on and just do control L to add it to your mixer track. And then we just have to go through and do that for the rest of these. So I'm gonna just do that really quickly. So now if we look here, we'll see that all the instruments are on here. So now here's what you're going to want to do. We're just going to level some of the sounds so that everything just sounds better. As one common mistake a lot of beginners will make is they'll have their sample or their loop way louder than their drums. When in reality, you really want your drums to be the loudest part of the beat because if you have an artist, like when I make my own tracks, my voice would never fit on the beat if I had my melodies and stuff like that too loud. So the easiest way to kind of do that is I'll typically have these instruments sitting between like 12 to 18 dB a good couple of rules to follow is one, your kick and your 808 are going to be the loudest part of your beat. So just keep an eye on this meter right here and just, you know, listen. Listening is kind of the best thing you can do. And then after that, you'll typically have your snare. That's kind of going to need to taste on how loud you want that. And then your hi-hats will be a little bit quieter, open hats, percussions, etc. Meanwhile, these instruments right here, I typically like these sitting below like 12 dB. Some even quieter. Like this one's only around like 20 or so. This sounds fine how it is right now. Let's talk EQ and this is just what makes things sound cleaner and the bare minimum that you need to do when you're first starting out, go to Fruity Parametric EQ 2. This will be a stock one that you have. And what you're gonna wanna do is move this down here, cut out about 200 Hertz on all of your instruments. By removing these frequencies from a sound, like an instrument or your sample, it's going to make your 808 hit harder and just sound cleaner and better. So it's really important that you do this at the bare minimum. But as we can see here, it was already done in the sample I made. Now, for the most part. Now, another thing you can do with your EQ, and this will be like the last thing I touched on with EQ, this is a very bright sound, right? If we take this out the way, which I'll see in a second, you'll see that the sound gets darker. And a little bit quieter, too, it almost sounds like. Now, obviously we're not done here. There's still a lot that goes into it. So I decided to just create this playlist. Feel free to follow this in the exact order as it's like a free little course that you can kind of take just all here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe. Check out Lost again. Thanks for watching. Peace.